My husband and I have always had a rule. We don't buy anything without telling the other. Some argue that's silly, but we were a young couple that already had children when we got married and didn't make a lot. Money problems can break a relationship real quick. Mm, yeah, I think there's two things that ruin a relationship very quickly. Money problems, sex problems, right? Yeah. There are others as well. We've been going around the country doing this tour and I've been reading this section and I talk about all the problems in this couple's relationship that we interviewed for the book, For Love People Use Things. Yeah. And we had this couple in Minneapolis. They had all these money troubles, but that was sort of the top layer covering this entire labyrinth of deeper troubles in their relationship. Sex life was non-existent, although when they first met, they were like rabbits, right? <laughs> and then over a decade later, it was like, oh, I'm kind of repulsed even thinking about it. That's not mm. a place you want to be in a relationship. Yeah. You want love, you want like, and you want lust if you want your relationship to thrive. If you have all three of those components, right? Well, one of the ways to sort of destroy all three of those money problems, not being on the same page with respect to money. Mm. Now, the best way is to be reading from the same book. We talked about this during the minimal episode this week, but what, I, what do I mean by that? Having partnering up with someone, if you're going to be in a partnership with someone, a business partnership, a romantic relationship, even a really close friendship, mm -hmm. I think it makes sense to have similar values, yeah. especially foundational values and the structural values. You can mm -hmm. download our free values worksheet, by the way theminimalists.com slash V as in values. There's an essay there called How to Understand Your Values. We talk about the four different types of values, including the imaginary values. And that's what I want to talk to Sarah about today, Ryan. I want to talk to Sarah about quite often where we run into trouble with our significant other is because we value different things or more important, we think we value different things. Mm. And so we think we certain things are going to be really important to us. If I just have that $3,000 tag hewer wristwatch, then I'm going to be happier, more complete, right? Nothing wrong with owning that wristwatch, but if you're making that purchase and forsaking the needs of the family or the needs of the relationship or the needs of your household, or maybe you're not paying rent, our good friend Andy Davis has that great line in his song, Good Life. Mm -hmm. We struggle to pay rent because jeans are expensive. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, it means we misprioritize. We say our jeans are valuable to us. And yeah, I, I'm wearing blue jeans or black jeans right now, <laughs> right? But I don't spend you know $1,200 on Balmain jeans either mm -hmm. because, well, A, because I don't need to, but B, because that's not a real value of mine. Even if I really thought that those looked great on me, It'd be a, I don't value those the same way I value having financial freedom. Yeah. Having savings, you know, an emergency fund, investing in my retirement. These are things that I value more than the sort of surface level things. And even if fashion is a surface value for you, you don't want to forsake your deeper values, your foundational values, your structural values, just to maintain the surface. The analogy that I often use has to do with painting a house. Mm -hmm. Great. You want to paint a house, but beautify your house, make your house look beautiful. Well, if it's infested by termites, mm -hmm. Painting the house isn't going to fix the structural damage that is being done right now. Yeah. And so we have to address the structural damage first. Now, how do we do that with a partner? Well, I know, Ryan, I've set up some, well, not I, Bex and I have set up in our own relationship some ground rules that help us with our own spending. One mm -hmm. is we don't bring anything into the house that we don't both agree on. Mm. Bex isn't going to go out and buy a brand new dresser or in table or a coffee table, and neither am I, a new set of chairs, without discussing it together first. In fact, just this week, Ryan, we uh, over Christmas, we, um, we have these two water bottles. I have a water bottle. She has a water bottle. We use it in the sauna. We use it when we're traveling. There were these Nalgene water bottles. And we brought them. We went to Palm Springs for Christmas. You know, mm -hmm. So we have some something to drink in the car. Well, at the last minute, she accidentally left them in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. We called, tried to find them. We've had these for years. 
they um they Gandhi. couldn't find them. Yeah, they're mm. gone. And so at first, uh, we're talking about even with something as trivial as seemingly benign as water bottles, mm -hmm. we make sure we are on the same page because we want to make this purchase once intentionally. And I'll even spend a little bit more to get the one that I need. So I don't ever have to make this purchase again unless we leave them somewhere again, mm -hmm. which I don't plan on doing. And so what we have done, we still haven't even bought the water bottles because it was like, okay, we can replace them with the same exact bottles. In fact, she sent me a few pictures. Hey, what about this one? And at first I even felt annoyed because she sent me one i'm like doesn't she know my taste better than that because <laughs> what do you say ryan you always say like well we all want to be understood yeah right yeah i want you to understand me mm -hmm. and I, at that moment i felt so misunderstood because she sent me this now jean bottle but had a blue top on it mm. who the hell wants a bright blue top on their water bottle god you're making uh, me oh feel goodness. terrible Man. <laughs> oh my goodness and and she knows even aesthetically, like mm. this isn't her top choice either, but it's all I could find right now. And but she she knows that like we're sending these back and forth because until we both agree on something, we're not gonna bring this into our home. And if we do that for something as simple as a couple water bottles, we're both satisfied with the purchase at the mm. end of the day. Mm. And we're also not worried about bringing in something that's going to be offensive to the other person. Now, what does that mean? That means sometimes we go without for a period of time. Mm. Unfortunately, in our culture, we've told ourselves it's not okay to go without. Mm. Going without means you're depriving yourself. Okay. Maybe you are tempor temporarily depriving yourself, but that temporary deprivation is like fasting. You do that for a period of time instead of bringing the junk into your life. Instead of consuming the junk, I would rather fast so I can be deliberate. I can be intentional with whatever we do bring into our home. Mm. And then once I have it, I'm not worried about it. And so we're still looking for the ideal water <laughs> bottle for us. Not the perfect water bottle, but oh, the question man. is, what is the one water bottle I'm going to buy that I don't have to think about yeah. for the next 5, 10, 15 years? Mm. And mm. If, I, if I can figure that out, then I'm no longer worried about, well, you know, I bought it, but I don't know if it's that good. I'm kind of annoyed by this purchase now I've had it for a year. I, I want something that's better than this. I want something that is more streamlined. I need something with Bluetooth technology in it, right? Voice-activated water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> coming to a uh, one-click purchase store near you. Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. I love. I had a black clean canteen coffee mug that um, I really liked. It was it looked good, um, matched my outfit, <laughs> <laughs> and I left it behind at this at uh, somewhere in I don't know somewhere in Malibu, and wasn't able to get it back. So I tried to find a black can clean canteen and I couldn't, and I just got I just whatever was available, like the generic silver with the black top. But I, but you know, for me though, um, it doesn't like, like I've never looked at that silver one and been like, God, I wish I had that black one. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I'm able to, I don't know, kind of move past it, but hey, what I love about what you're talking about with you and Bex and what Sarah's talking about here is how you're able to set up these boundaries together. Like that, is really what helps a relationship thrive. Yeah. Is instead of like being reactionary and, you know, letting something get out of hand, it's like you kind of get ahead of it and say, hey, what's our boundary when it comes to this thing? Now, sometimes something will happen and then you realize like, oh, wow, we really should set a boundary around this, which is fine. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I just admire, I just admire the fact, I, I admire the fact that Mariah and I are able to do that. I mean, I can't even tell you the relationships I used to be in, man, it was like, it was one way or the highway and most of it had to do with me. Like it was me basically saying, Hey, this is how I want it to be. And if it isn't this way, then I'm going to be a jerk. Um, but also I had, you know, partners, you know, the partners that I used to have where, uh, they would, yeah, it was either their way or not the highway. It was either their way or uh, they make my life miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I remember one where that was explicitly stated to you. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty uh, much. And and so I think here's the here's the key to all of this, whether it's for Sarah or anyone who's listening to this. If you get to the point where you're hiding purchases from one one another, or you're just hiding shame from one another, then 
that is it's harming your relationship mm -hmm. and you you can talk to someone else now if they're judging your purchases and saying i don't want you to have that and you shouldn't have any independence or that's not what we're talking about here what we're talking about is a willingness to be open with your partner to be truthful about your own desires where do your desires come from having them understand your desires you understanding their desires and doing so together because if you are sharing resources that also means you need to be intentional together. You can't go off spending resources separately if you are also sharing your resources. Mm. That's like if you're all putting, uh, if you're giving to the us bucket in the middle of that relationship, but you're constantly taking from it secretly, mm -hmm. it's, of course that's going to cause discontent in the relationship. Yeah. You know, we were, uh, we, we put out a call here to a lot of our, um, patrons and, and other folks on social media about things that have annoyed them. And I thought what was interesting here, Andrew said that three days before his wedding, he found out, uh, or before a wedding, not his wedding, he was going to, he found out meals at the reception would be $100, $110 per person. And that's a weird sort of surprise, right? So like a hey, wedding welcome you're to going, our wedding. Yeah. It's like paying yeah. a, you know, a cover fee to get into the wedding. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I understand it, but what, what the lesson of this, any of these surprises is having some sort of clear understanding of what you're getting into. Yeah. Don't spring that on anyone, whether it's buying a watch or it is buying a new sofa or it's asking someone to come to your wedding and then sort of charging them at the last minute or even worse. Like if you go to an activity together mm -hmm. and then you know the next day you get like a Venmo request. Mm. Hey, you remember that uh, sandwich we split? Uh, I'm sending you a Venmo request for three dollars, please. Yeah. Oh man, it makes me think about um, Mariah had gone out with a friend, and it was a big group of girls, and uh, this girl covered the whole meal or whatever. And like Mariah had tried to pay, but they were like, "No, I got it. Don't worry about it." And then the next day, she sends Mariah a Venmo request for like fifty bucks. <laughs> oh wow! So she wanted the the virtue signal of. <laughs> yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and man. then she and Mariah was like, I only because they were all drinking. Mariah doesn't drink because yeah. of her stomach problems. So like Mariah only got, you know, maybe 10 bucks, 20 bucks or something. That's and, unbelievable. And man. it was funny because I'm and Mariah, she's like, What do I do? And I'm like, you know, you could have this confrontation. Is it worth the twenty dollars or the thirty dollars to have this confrontation? Yeah, I'd pay fifty dollars to get rid of that friend. Exactly. So that's basically mm -hmm. what she did. She <laughs> said the fifty bucks, and I was like, just never talk to her again. Like it's fine. It was, yeah, it was really, it was really shady. But dude, this is cr I. I think I don't know, man. Piece of me would just be like, you know what? I guess we're not going to come to your, or I wouldn't eat at the wedding. Maybe that's would be it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just I, bring a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't worry. I packed my own dinner. Oh, that'd be so good if like Andrew showed up with a happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> during the reception <laughs> yeah and i mean there were all these other annoyances people brought up as well like uh sarah said i have a few items of clothing that were surprise purchases i do try to resell anything i don't want on ebay or macari but sometimes it's a slow process yeah. now so i think yes a surprise purchase in the sense that like it was an impulse purchase mm -hmm. right oh i really thought that dress look great on that mannequin therefore it will look great on me uh, megan said any present that someone gives me that is decor related is likely going to be an unwelcome surprise Ooh, amen i oh. agree with that and i i have one exception that proves this rule mm. so uh our publisher although they didn't really surprise this is interesting our our publisher celadon they um they gave us this like little piece of uh, pottery uh, artwork oh, yeah. and it had the little Celadon logo and it's in Celadon green is even the color that it is. They, they had a local artist, I think in, in New yeah. York city who worked on, on this. And, but even beforehand, they're like, Hey, we usually give this to any of our authors, but I don't know if you guys would, or you're the minimalist. Do you really right. want it? And I'm like, sure. It's a piece of art and it seems really yeah. intentional and beautiful. Yeah. And so it's the one thing that someone has given me where I actually still display it. Yeah. And that's great. But most of the time, if you get me something, it 
it's essentially giving me clutter. Yeah, it is a um man, it's just it's a risky gift. Like I would never give you a P unless I was like hundred percent positive, like, oh, he's gonna use this. Like you gave you gave me a picture of me and Mariah. And uh, I just framed photographs. It's great, yeah. Frame photographs, and that's great. Like I, t- I totally frame that. It's a beautiful picture. It's, yeah, it's funny. It's, it's good. Um, but yeah, I've had like, I've had people who g- give me a box of decorations, like, yeah, uh, v- vases and um, <laughs> little cups and like little. I don't know. My my mom does this a lot, and sometimes like it's great. But like, yeah, the vast majority of the time, I'm like, mom, I love you, but. I'm going to have to find these a better home. Yeah. Or like when my grandma tried to give me that paperweight. Yeah. Just gifting someone a piece of uh, home decor is always going to be a risky move. For I lo- sure. I love the paperweight because it's literal. She tried to give you paperweight, <laughs> but it's also like a metaphor for any unwanted. We, that's what the metaphor we use. We call it, oh, well, it's just a paperweight now. Right. And what, what that means is it's essentially useless. Right. Its best use is to hold down papers. Mm. One other thing here, um, Holly brings up a great point. She said online auctions can quickly turn into surprise purchases. And what she means here is that you get caught up in the moment. Mm. That you see something that is on eBay or if you go to a real auction and you're like, oh, I really want to buy that you know, set of baseball cards or Pokemon cards, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. And it's $100 for this set, right? That's the starting bid. But then someone else bids 110 someone else bids 120 and now you're caught up in it. Well, I've already, it's, I've, I've already committed, so I should go 130 at least. Mm. Right? It's only $30 more. No, it's not. It's $130 more at this point. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the, the bidding's up to 250 and you're like, oh, should I do 260 It's only $10 more. No, it's $260 more than the zero that you've spent right now. Mm. And it's hard to walk away in those moments because we get so caught up in the excitement. Yeah. We get caught up in the moment. We get caught up in the impulse. And and what are we afraid of most? As humans, we are afraid of loss. And in that moment, there is this perceived loss. If I don't bid on this car right now, on this T-shirt right now, on this dress right now, I really want those coffee mugs that I saw on eBay. Or what about that piece of pottery? What about the paperweight I want to buy? It's only X dollars. And now all of a sudden, I'm committed to it because the fear of living without, even though I've lived without it forever, mm-hmm. I don't own it right now. The fear of not having it at this point is so great mm. that I'm willing to spend irrationally to get something that I never even had in the first place. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast, available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.